My name is Deb Howes, as you just heard. I teach at Amherst Street School in Nashua, New Hampshire. I'm here today to talk about how I see the impact of a low-wage economy on my students. Because as we know, low wages don't just hurt the individual worker, they hurt the whole family. A uh, little bit of dry background here. There are many low-wage workers in Nashua, many trying to raise families. About 40% of the students in our public school district get free and reduced price lunch, but in my school that's 70 to 75% of the students. Most of these children come from families where at least one adult works, sometimes more than one job. Many of these families are just one unexpected bill away from disaster. A parent's low wages definitely affects a student's success at school. In fact, low income levels in a family are one of the strongest predictors of low academic achievement. And this is not from lack of effort on the student's part, or from lack of caring about education on the family's part, or from lack of skill and passion on the teacher's part. It's because many low-wage families just have to use so much energy and focus trying to survive day to day that there's just not much left to spend on anything else. I'm going to talk a bit about some of my students and how I've seen this impact them. My students come to school worried about food. When food is scarce at home, they think about it a lot during school. And even though they can get lunch at school, the fear of not having food at home, the fear of will there be any snacks when I get home, will there be anything for dinner, will I be hungry tomorrow morning, um, takes a lot of their attention. This is called being unavailable to learn. If they're thinking about food and anxious about it, it's very hard to focus on addition, on reading, on standardized tests. But they still have to take them like everyone else, and they're still used to judge the school, whether it's succeeding or failing. Each and every time I hear some politician talk about wanting to make cuts to the school lunch program because they're on some crusade to end government spending, I get very angry. I think of my students and how more of them will be anxious, more of them will be worried, more of them will be hungry. I want to make those politicians come and sit with my kids, look them in the face, and tell them why anything in the world can be more important than them having enough to eat. My students also see how their moms and dads worry about paying the rent, and they take that worry with them. They start to worry about it too. They bring those worries into the classroom. I had a student one time who was wondering when she got home from school, was everything they owned going to be packed in trash bags again and out on the curb because they had been evicted again? This had happened to her family several times. Obviously, she was unavailable to learn. She couldn't just focus on the problems of the fictional characters and the stories we were reading, which is a lesson I was supposed to be teaching her, but her mind was totally taken up with the very real problems of her family outside of school. Low wages are one problem. Lack of benefits are a second problem for many families. I've known fourth and fifth grade girls who repeatedly miss school because they have to stay home to take care of a younger sibling who's sick. If mom or dad has a job where they can't take a sick day because they'll lose their job, and there's a younger child who can't go to school, and there's no money for a babysitter, the family makes the decision they have to for survival that day. It costs these girls in their education, it costs them in their future, but surviving today is always going to come first. A parent's lack of benefits mean health issues might go untreated, which affects a student's academics. I knew a student who was always acting out. He was loud, he was disruptive, he was aggressive with the other kids, he couldn't do his work, he couldn't stay focused. It turned out the school nurse discovered this student had several abscessed teeth. He was in pain, he was acting out because it hurt, but it had hurt for so long he didn't have the words to say this is something different. He thought it should always feel that way. And his parents' jobs did not afford them enough health coverage to get him dental care. They couldn't afford to take him to the dentist. Raising wages and improving benefits so a family could actually live and have a margin of security would do a lot to help my students. It would give them more capacity to focus on what I'm teaching instead of occupying their brains with things that really should be adult concerns. Food, getting health care, paying the rent. That should not be anything a third grader is worried about. Uh, it would give them a chance to show what they really can achieve and allow them to focus on the brightest future 
instead of being stuck in the right now, scrambling to survive. And I want to add one more thought to this that's been on my mind a lot the last seven weeks. Another problem with the low-wage economy is that it encourages employers to get rid of good-paying jobs in favor of low-wage, no-benefit jobs. In Nashua, our Board of Education voted in the middle of September to privatize the jobs of 101 uh, members of the Nashua School Custodians asking 365. Oh, yes. Exactly. Those good paying jobs that give you security, benefits, and a chance to support a family will be gone at the end of June if we can't get this decision turned around. That means there will be more families in Nashua whose students are coming to school but just aren't able to learn because their minds aren't there, their minds are on the struggles at home. We need to raise everyone's wages, make sure all jobs come with benefits, so there's no more incentive to race to the bottom and get rid of good paying jobs. Thank you.